Strange Darling is the name of the new thriller film that was written and directed by Las Vegas native, that's right, Tony himself from Tony and Tina's Wedding, the amazing stage show in Vegas. His name is Mr. J.T. Malner. And in this film, we have actress Willa Fitzgerald, we have actor Kyle Gallner, as well as seasoned actors Barbara Hershey and Ed Begley Jr. And I would be remiss if I forgot to mention that this film was produced and even photographed by the great Giovanni Ribisi. The movie takes place in six chapters in a rather non-linear format, including an epilogue, and we have The Lady, played by Willa Fitzgerald, and The Demon, played by Kyle Gowner. And one night, this lady is on the run from this crazy psychopath named The Demon, that's Kyle Gowner, and through her ways trying to escape this man, secrets unfold, deception ensues, and what ends this film is quite the shocking amount of gore and revelations that will definitely leave you on the edge of your seat. That's the best I can say without completely spoiling this film, but oh my gosh, I was absolutely gobsmacked by this movie. I had not had any real expectations because the trailer looked kind of meh, but it might have been all right, and then they try to make it seem like the movie is so big because it was photographed by actor Giovanni Ribisi and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, yeah, I know he's been in lots of films like Gone in 60 Seconds, Lost in Translation, Flight of the Phoenix, and the Avatar movies and whatnot, and Boiler Room. But acting as a DP, shooting this on 35mm, as it clearly states, with a text before the movie starts, and it's interesting, I might add, Earlier that day on my quadruple feature that I had on Monday, the movie Blink Twice had a trigger warning about sexual violence, and now we're getting format notifications before the movie gets going. I guess they're really trying to let everybody know, hey, it's shot on film, because it was. And apart from it being shot on film, Giovanni wisely shot this film in anamorphic. Way to go. I applaud you, sir. That's what I would always use if I ever got to this point. And the movie was shot in Oregon in the summer of 2022, and it had a limited theatrical release just this past week in August of 2024. And like I said, what we got was a game of cat and mouse and constant th just thrill from start to finish. This is the textbook definition of what a thriller is. And the performances, particularly by Willa Fitzgerald, are absolutely special spellbinding. I was on the edge of my seat from start to finish. The film is 96 minutes long. Not a single minute is wasted. And I know that I have praised quite a few films, especially in the thriller genre, for this year. 2024 has been one hell of a comeback. We've had amazing films such as Long Legs. We've also had uh, Trap, which wasn't too terrible for its PG-13, but it got a little muddled in the end. But we also had In a Violent Nature. We had one of my personal favorites this year with Late Night with the Devil. So we've definitely been going on a good little binge here, if you will. Even the wacky and kooky, uh, oh gosh, it's just, a, oh, Love Lies Bleeding. I almost forgot the title, damn it. But anyway, you know, 2024 has been quite the year for thrillers. And this probably is the best of the thrillers of this year. That's right. I am sorry to say, but I'm going to have to knock off that pedestal in a violent nature down to spot number three because Strange Darling is now taking the number two spot. Number one for horror thriller this year for me is still going to be Late Night with the Devil. I doubt anything is going to take that off, but hey, we got another four months to figure out what's happening. Well, actually three months because we're almost in September now, so there you go. But I digress. This movie is absolutely dynamite. You know, it has so many crazy things. It has so many different avenues that it takes. It's very, very intelligently written. We have moments where we think it's going to happen. We can try to get ahead of the film, and we're usually right because if you can imagine it and it happens, then the movie also has a really good way of portraying what people would do in real life. And I was really pleased with that. 
and I thought this was just a really good exercise in thrill and suspense. The last act, including its epilogue, are also very good. We have moments where we think, oh, this person's going to handle it, and then, oh, that's not going to happen. This movie takes no prisoners in any way, shape, or form. It is going to make you cringe at certain moments because it has gross things that happen in it. It has a really good music score as well. And it has that song, uh, Love Hurts, that's in it. It has an original score by Craig DeLeon. And I believe the other person's name... Oh, it's escaping me. There's, oh, gosh. Their name, they... They sang most of the songs in the film, like Benny G or something like that. I, Sorry, I cannot remember. But either way, I, I really liked this movie a lot. And, you know, it's definitely worth watching. I know that some people felt that with the scrambled nonlinear narrative that it felt like it was derivative of something Tarantino would have done, but that's bullshit. There have been plenty of films that have been told in a nonlinear fashion, and this movie just happens to do it very, very well. And again, even if you put all the pieces in order, it would still make a fine film, but showing it out of order makes it even better. Trust me, if you're into solid thrillers with a solid minimal amount of actors that you can keep track of, with, good, with really good gore, admittedly, and a semi-original story, Strange Darling is going to give you what you want and more. This is arguably the best thriller of 2024. Rotten Tomatoes gives Strange Darling a 96%. I easily give Strange Darling a very, very well-deserved A+. This is must-watch. It does have universal acclaim all across the board. Everything works right down from the acting to the production to the pacing. This is what a great thriller is all about. And as fucking usual, it did not make a lot of money. The film has only been in theaters as of this recording for just about a year, even though it got its release last year at various film circuits. The fact that the film has a $4 million budget, has universal acclaim, and has made less than $2 million, and will probably fizzle out because Beetlejuice 2 is coming out next week, it's a shame that it will just sadly get buried in the shuffle. But if you can find a screening of Strange Darling or you have it at a dollar theater or a value cinema, whatever you want to call it, see this movie. I know my good mates in the great southern land get a lot of these releases months later. If you lot down under see the trailer to this, and you can as well because it's, of course, linked in the description, I urge you to watch the trailer. It does not spoil the movie. It only will entice you, I promise you. Go see this movie because the performances from the four primary actors are all equally great in their own measure. But I must warn you, <laughs> there is a moment where Ed Begley Jr.'s character prepares a Sunday breakfast that will make you clutch your chest at how disgusting it is. Oh, I don't even want to remember it. You'll know what I mean when you see it. it. looks like the ultimate breakfast that fat bastard would make for himself. You'll see what I mean when you see it. It's rather bizarre, but it's all in good fun. And I can't wait to see what JT Molnar brings us going forward. I might have seen him because I've seen Tony and Tina's wedding and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, he seems like a pretty great guy. This is his sophomore effort. His last film that he did was eight years ago called Outlaws and Angels. And he has a affinity for using vintage Panavision lenses and Kodak film stock. And again, I must <laughs> applaud you, sir. And I can't wait to see Giovanni Ribisi's further career as a cinematographer as well. It looks like he can do a whole lot more than just act. But that's the most I have to say about Strange Darling. Go check it out. And never forget, people, the cinema is the perfect arena for conflict. And thank God, in my case, there wasn't a damn bit to be had. You guys take care. Support filmmakers like J.T. Molnar. Go check out Strange Darling, especially if you're a fan of thrillers and the fact that it's now spooky season. This will be just the treat. That's just right. But unlike that breakfast that you'll see fixed in the film, it won't make you sick. It'll satisfy you just right. You guys take care, and I'll see you at the movies. Bye now.